Okay guys, in this one we're going to have a look at how we do calculations uh, using upper and lower bounds. So the first thing you'll probably be given in the exam is something like this, where it'll say A is represented by 4.8 and it's been rounded to one decimal place or, or it'd be whatever, whatever it says in the question. So the first thing you need to do is actually work out the upper and lower bound of the 4.8 when it's been rounded to one decimal place. So if you are unsure, I've done another video on how you do upper and lower bounds, but quite simply, if it's 4.8, we stick 4.8 in the middle. If I was to round up one decimal place, we would have 4.9. And if I was to round down, I would have 4.7. Okay, so to work out the lower bound, I go in between there. So that's 4.75. And upper bound in the middle of there, so 4.85. And they usually give you two, because that's what we're going to be doing calculations with a minute. So that was for A. For B here, 2.4 rounded to one decimal place. Again, it could be anything. Just have to read the question. So 2.4 in the middle, rounding up. 2.5, rounding down. 2.3. So in the middle there will give me the lower bound. So 2.35. In between there, we give me the upper bound, 2.45. So that's the first thing that you need to do before you do any calculations is actually work out the upper and lower bound of each one of the numbers you've been given. Now, different things that you could be asked. You could be asked to times them, add them, subtract them, or divide them. And it might want you to work out the lower bound of that calculation or the upper bound of that calculation and so on and so forth. So all I'm going to do here is just illustrate what you need to do in these particular circumstances. So let's start off with timesing them. And we want the lower bound when we times them. So the lowest possible value you can get when you multiply these two together. So this one's actually quite nice and easy. So is the adding one. It's what you expect it to be. To work out the lowest value, you do the lower bound times by the lower bound. And in this case, it's 4.75 for A times by 2.35 for B. I'm going to get my calculator out here. So 4.75 times by 2.35 is going to give me 11.1625. OK. And that's going to give me the lower bound. That's the absolute minimum value that this can have when I multiply the two numbers together. Upper bound, you probably guessed it, is the upper bound of both of them when we times them together. In which case, that's going to be 4.85 for A times by the 2.45 for B. And again, I'll get my calculator out. 4.85 uh, times 2.45 and oh, I'm not going to squeeze that in so 11.8825 okay when we add them again just as expected if I want to get the lowest possible value when I add them it's going to be the lower bound plus the lower bound so again 4.75 plus 2.35, I'm just going to use the calculator again, save me making a mistake by trying to rush this and doing it in my head, which is 7.1, and the upper bound, just as expected, again, you want the absolute maximum this can be when you add them together, upper bound plus upper bound, so 4.85 plus 2.45, Again, I'll just use a calculator just to avoid any mistakes. 7.3. Okay, so don't forget you can use the in error interval, which is what I mentioned in my other video, where you can use the inequalities to represent the lower bound and the upper bound, but I haven't really got space for that at the minute. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier. If you want the lowest possible value when you subtract these, sorry, if you want the lower bound, the first number will need to be the lower bound, as small as it possibly can be, and the number you're taking away needs to be the biggest possible value it can be. So basically, to get this as small as possible, it'll be the lower bound, take away 
the upper bound. Okay, that's going to give us the smallest possible value we can get. So in which case the lower bound for A was 4.75 minus the upper bound of B, which was 2.45. So again, let's do that. 4.75, take away this time 2.45. 2.3 and if you want the absolute maximum it can be so the upper bound when you take these away your first number needs to be as big as possible so your upper bound and then the number you're taking away so in this case B needs to be as small as possible so it's the lower bound so upper bound for A is the 4.85 lower bound for B 2.35 uh, and again, just work that out. That's, that's quite a nice one, actually. Which I probably should have done it in my head. Never mind. So 2.5. Okay. If you're unsure or you can't struggle to remember that, easy way I remember it is lower bound. If you want the lower bound of this calculation, that's the one you always start off with. Then it's the opposite one. If you want the upper bound, that's the one you start off with. And then you take away the other one. Okay, and that same rule applies with dividing. If you want to get the smallest possible value, you need to have the smallest value first, then you can divide by the biggest value. Okay, because this number will go into this number, so this number is as big as possible, your overall answer will be smaller. Okay, so upper, sorry, lower bound for A was 4.75. I'm going to divide that by the upper bound which for B, which was 2.45. So let's have a look at that. 4.75 divided by 2.45. Ooh, that's a horrible number. 1.9387, and it keeps going. Okay, in that particular case, it might ask you to round it to a decimal place or a significant figure or something like that. So just make sure you read the question. And finally, to finish it all off, you probably guessed it, when you're dividing and you want the upper bound of the calculation, you want the biggest value for A, so the upper bound for A, and you want to divide that by the lower bound for B. So 4.85 divided by the lower bound, which was 2.35. Let's see what that is. 4.85 divided by 2.35. And again, it's a massive, horrible number, 2.0638, blah, 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 blah. And again, the question might ask you to round that in the actual exam. Okay, so a couple of things to remember. Whenever you're timesing them or adding them and you want the lower bound, lower bound times lower bound or lower bound plus lower bound, upper bound, really nice to remember, upper bound times upper bound or upper bound plus upper bound. When you're subtracting and dividing, you've got to be a little bit careful which other one you're after. If you're after the lower bound for the calculation, start off with the lower bound and then either take away or divide by the opposites, in this case the upper bound, and exactly vice versa. If you want the upper bound of the calculation, start off with the upper bound and then take away the lower bound or divide by the lower bound. Remember that. You should be able to do any calculations uh, using bounds. Hopefully that's useful, guys. Cheers.